Well, here we have a 1994 Club Car DS Gas. This one here is another one of those. Doesn't do anything when you step on the pedal. Let's grab, grab our key, slide it in. Come on, get in there. Put it in forward, step on the gas pedal. As you can hear, all you get out of it are some clicks. We're gonna have one of two things potentially wrong here. Uh, I, I don't think it's a battery issue. I think it might be either a solenoid or it's gonna be a starter generator brushes. So yeah, let's get it up on the ramps and jump into it. All right, so as you can hear, let's put this thing on surface mode. Break off, key on. As you can hear, it's not really doing anything that it should be doing. It's oh, quarter inch. Oh, five sixteenths. Okay. So we're going to check the solenoid first. Actually, we're just going to gain access to the solenoid. Now, this is just because of experience. Um, just like anytime there's an electrical issue, grab your voltmeter. First thing you should check would be your battery. So plus, minus. 13 volts almost, 12 nine. So we know we're good there. So what I'm gonna do is the next thing down the line, cause it's clicking, but it's not doing anything. I'm gonna stab my negative terminal on the negative battery post. And we're gonna go to the hot side of the solenoid, 12 nine. All right, so now then I'll step on the pedal. Solenoid's energized. We have 12, six, seven. So that tells me we have good power transfer through our solenoid. So now what I'll do is I'm going to put my voltmeter, my multimeter rather, to ohms, and we're going to check. Oh, that's not right. Oh, you know what it is? We have some, that ain't going to work because we have other kinds of wires hooked up to this thing that are going to throw off our thing. So I'm thinking our solenoid is good, actually. The way it sounds, it sounds really good. So I think we're gonna have to check the starter generator. Jump it out, see if it's... Okay, so I'm jumping it out. I don't know if you can see the sparks. But we're not, we're not getting anything. Okay, so we can eliminate the starter generator, I'm sorry, eliminate the, the solenoid as a problem because we're not getting any power back to the, I mean, we're getting power back there, but the starter generator is not cranking over. Let's rotate the camera here. So you see that black rubbery thing, center of the screen. So the guy right here, Ooh, that is brittle. What we're gonna do is we're gonna remove that cover and we're gonna see what the brushes look like. Oh, if I can get it off. That's crunchy. Okay, so our starter generator brushes. Look fine. Do we have any wires broken off? Nope, no terminals are melted. Turn the key back on. See how it's moving freely in the carriage. I'm kind of wondering if we have... We might have a bad starter generator. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the starter generator out of the cart and see what happens. Stupid mosquitoes are starting. All right, I'm gonna move my light. Whoops, I just pulled the sleeve off of it. It's all right. I'll try to just jam it in here. We're gonna crack loose these. Oop. Okay. Get them loose first. I wonder if I'm gonna be able to get in here with the camera. Goes. I gotta move you. Move you back a little. Okay. I gotta take this stupid extension off. I always have to put an extension on this socket for this outside one because I can't get in here with the muffler and the tailpipe. Oh, 
come on. Stop. Stop jumping off. There we go. Just takes a little bit of effort to crack her loose. Okay. I'm just taking the... I'm going to leave the bolt in there. I'm just taking the nut off the bolt. That way I don't lose the washers. Even though they're pretty much shot. Now we need the half inch on a long extension. I have to get in here. And what I got to do is guide it. If I can get it in here. The problem is, there we go. You have to fight with the lack of space. Come on. Okay. So what I'm undoing is the adjuster bolt and nut. It's half inch, or at least it's supposed to be. And then starter generator should become loose. All right. I don't want to lose the lock washer. There we go. And the carriage bolt. All right, the starter generator belt comes right off. And then I'll take that out. I'll take that out. While I'm here, I'm going to remove positive battery terminal which I should have done before but I didn't see now you can see the access that we have here is none okay battery positive battery terminal is disconnected so I gotta get I probably should disconnect all these wires before I tried to move this thing out of here you don't have to take off the jumper wire you just need to take off the the DF, the ground, and the power. So you need 10 and 8 millimeters. So the DF, I don't I know you guys can't see what I'm doing here. The DF is this yellow one. You want to hold back on it if you can. Oh, make sure you drop the wrench first because that's part of it. Okay, there we go. Okay, and then once this loosens up, it'll move fairly easily. I have a feeling we're going to be putting a starter generator in this cart. I don't know why. That's just my hunch. Okay, there. All right, and then I'll put the flat and lock washer back on with the nut because I mean these 10 millimeter studs here are pretty gnarly looking so I don't know if they're gonna if they're gonna come off or not without a fight oh there we go that's we just got lucky there this one I didn't get the ground off yet oh look at that now we can hand unloosen it Hand loosen it, I mean. Unloosen is tightening. <laughs> Camera's right in my face. That's why I sound like I do. All right, now we take off our ground. It's one thing I have to say about starter generators. They're actually fairly easy to work on. Okay. They're heavy. And they're a pain in the ass to maneuver around, but... They are, oh, looks like that one's missing the flat washer, or one of them. Okay, so that is actually disconnected. Now what I usually will do if I have the room, let's see if I can pull you way back here, is I try to pull them out here between, right in here. Usually you can get them out, we'll see. Oh, there we go, look at that, like a butter. 
explore this together while it's right here. See now the link wire, you don't have to take this link wire off until you're ready to actually take that off there. So I'll put this right here on the gas tank. I'm gonna peel off this cover. That one looks okay. I mean, it looks okay. The armature, or commutator rather, is not scorched. I wonder if it's, where's my needle nose? Let's see if this brush here is stuck. Well, yeah, this one, see they're sticking. That brush is a little crunchy. I bet you the brushes are just sticking in their, their holders. I bet you that's all it is. That one looks like it's, there's a lot of meat on them. I'm trying not to breed that dust in. I know it's carbon, let's see. Yeah, that one's moving, but it's stiff. So I bet you that's our that's just our problem. We can uh, we're gonna have to take the back of the starter generator apart. We'll take the brushes out. We'll file them, file the carrier slots, make sure they're all good. And we should be good to go. While I have it here, though, I am gonna crack this loose while I can, and then I'll take it over to the vise. Come on, you. There we go. And it only goes in one place, so it's not hard to figure out. I always put the the nuts and washers back on. All right, let's uh, let's take this stupid thing back over to the vise. Get this end cap off. Okay. Oh, I'm off. Off shot here. I am a trying to. I know that's a little. I have my GoPro mounted to a slide out drawer on one of my parts bins. So it may jiggle around because the drawer is settling. So just be mindful and cautious of this dust coming out of here. Try not to breathe it. You really should probably wear a respirator and a mask and all that crap, but I don't. Do as I say, not as I do. I guess. See, I'm not an expert by any stretch on electric motors. I know you supply them with power, and they're supposed to rotate. That's what I do now. Okay, let's see. Maybe I'm going to get my rubber mallet. Or I'll just get my sledgehammer and tap on it. Not hitting it hard. Just hard enough to make it move. All right, now we're gonna wiggle. There we go. Okay. Yeah, see? That one just snapped, but it's sticking. See? That one was, is sliding free, but these ones are stuck. There's still a lot of meat. There's the wear bar, and it still has all of that. All three, all four of them are like that. And it's not even dirty. Really. Like we're gonna, whoops, we're gonna clean this commutator bars up with some uh, uh, emery cloth stuff. Canvas. Now, I know you motor aficionados out there are probably screaming at the damn TV screen or your phone or computer screen or whatever you're watching me on. This is the tool I have to do this. Okay, that's all I have. I do have motor cleaner. Motor com contact cleaner. So we'll use that to clean that up. And then I will wipe off that. Ooh, that stuff smells good. Okay. And they're clean. And just to let you know, this is how I've done this. I've fixed these things like this for years. And I've had none come back because of something I did like this. So, save your comments, because I know somebody out there is going to have a comment. 
Okay, so now what I'm going to do with this here is I'm going to put this here in the vise. Can you see what I'm doing? Uh, no. No, you cannot. All right, let's see if I can do it this way. Just for video's sake, we'll flip it around the other way. I'll bring my light over here. Let's see how this, how this is going to work. Don't mind my... Okay, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I don't know where my Phillips that screwdriver went to, so I'm going to use the... I prefer to use the flathead on this anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to take out the brushes one at a time. Okay. I have a points file here. Thank you to whichever viewer told me what this file is for. I didn't realize it was a points file. Uh, we're going to use the file tip here to lift the retainer spring off of that. See, now this one looks like it's in decent shape. Little bit of scoring on there from where I was dicking at it with my... Whoops. Okay, it didn't break. We're good. Uh, there's still a significant amount of material on here, so I'm not going to replace these, but I am going to clean them up because you can kind of see where there's a little bit of scoring going on right there. And you don't have to go nuts with this, okay? Just lightly file it, get the sharp edges off, and then just wipe it off. Okay, just like that. So now it's it should be it should be nice and smooth. I don't know if you I can't get too close to the camera because focusing this thing is not possible. All right, so that one's good. So before we put that one back in, what I want to do is I want to clean that up. So what I'm going to use are some dentist tools here. These are not actually dentist tools. They're just called that, I guess. I'm going to hold on to the spring, hold it back, take this file and just get any burrs off of it. You don't have to go nuts, like I said, just gently. And then get the side one here. There shouldn't be any on the insulating cardboard material, fiberglass material. It should be good. We'll put the brush back in all the way. Okay, let it go all the way down and I want to make sure that it moves freely up and down. You know what I noticed? These don't have the insulating sheathings on them. And then we'll take our, our braided wire here, drop our screw back in there. I wish I knew where my Phillips head was. And then we'll give it a noogie so it's tight. Okay, so now this one's done. Before we put these back in the electric into the starter generator, we'll push them up so they're out of the way. I'll do the second, I'll do another one here for you. Same thing. Okay, there we go. Oh, here it is. Grab the spring. See now this one, this one is really sticking in there. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see that. See, there's a little bit of scoring there, but still, it's got a whole bunch of life left in it. And you can see where it's kind of sticking a little bit there. So it's possible that it got hot or a little bit of crap got on there somehow from running or a little, little chunk of starter generator brush got lodged in there but like you just go around it gently like I'm barely putting any pressure on this brush just letting the surface of the file glide over it and I'm chamfering the edges gently I'm just kind of dragging it and then that's that and then I'll just wipe it off with a dry paper towel. Okay. And the reason you want to do one at a time, yeah, you can see a little bit of pitting there. Hopefully you can see that. The reason why you want to do one at a time 
is because you want the brush to go back into the same hole. Yes, you can just go ahead and replace them if you want. Uh, but these brushes are actually good. And I've done this multiple times too. I've had no problems with this. Okay. Take our brush. When it's loose like this, see it's still dragging a little bit. Where is it dragging? I need the light. Okay, so there's a little pitted area right here. Let's see if that's what it was. Sometimes if you look on it, you can see where it was dragging. There we go, see? Just that little tiny piece. I'm gonna twist that one time so the braid stays tight together. We'll put, start the screw. You guys see what I'm doing? The camera keeps going to sleep here and I to conserve battery power. See, now what I like about using the flathead, where did I put it? Here it is. Is that it gets right into that slot. This one's like the perfect screwdriver for this because I can get a nice torque twist on that. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do these ones and then we'll be back when we put it back together. Alrighty, so we got them all done now. They're all working and sliding just like they're supposed to, as you can see, nice and smooth, nothing sticking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to put my finger in here. Oh, there goes my meter shutting off. I'm going to try to pull this up like this so the spring actually sits kind of low there, but it doesn't come out of the carrier. You don't need to use a dental pick for this. I mean, you could use a screwdriver if you wanted. I'm just using a dental pick because I have one right here in front of me. There we go. It just makes it that much easier. Usually. Okay, so the spring went off a little. There we go. Try to make sure the springs don't ping off, hit you in the face, because uh, they hurt. Okay, so now we'll take our remanufactured starter generator. They only go together one way. You can see there's a female pin, pin hole, and a male pin here. They line them up. Just like so. Actually, let me check that. Okay, that's okay. Bear, this would be a good time to change the bearing if it's, it was groaning a little bit, but it should just go right back together. And then I'll take this and just tap it. You can hear that sound, hear how it changed tone as I tapped it closed. Put this bolt in, put this bolt in. So you can see guys, they're not that hard. And then we'll push our brushes back down until the until the uh, springs seat. And there we go. And there you have it. This repair, if you had to do this, this repair would only cost you a little bit of time. It wouldn't cost you any amount of money. Uh, it'll buy you some time at least because they're, they're going to probably poof up and swell again. Ideally, you should you should change the starter generator brushes when you can. Let me get the rubber caps. So ideally, you should change them. But we try to save the customer a little bit of money, get their cart back a lot quicker. 
I presently don't have any starter generator brushes in stock, unfortunately. A lot of carts have been going through these things like crazy lately, which is weird. But, you know, it is what it is, I guess. And then the slot, the thin slot goes towards the metal case and the fat part goes towards the end cap. Just got to make sure that your wire here doesn't short out against anything. Sometimes you gotta use a dental pick or some other sort of pick to get them to go in. Especially these ones because they're really stiff. Yeah, see now this wire here is, t is touching the metal case. So if that was if that was the it wasn't the ground side. Well, actually it's not. It's the series, the A2 Armature 2. It would actually arc and short out. And while I'm here, I will tighten this down too. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Shove this on. This one's really stiff. Okay. All the caps are on. Should be good. Ooh. Hold back on that. Just give it a noogie. There we go. Okay, let's go back over to the cart. Now reinstalling it is just the same in reverse. Have to start a generator and feed it back in the way you pulled it out. Okay. And then I will reconnect everything. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see what I'm doing. Not totally, probably, right? Well, let's see, I could actually let's extend you back over here now. I know this, it's just really tight quarters, guys. It's hard to really get you in everywhere. Ground. Here's our positive, it goes to F2, which is the field. F1 goes to A2, A1 goes to ground. All right, and then DF or a duff, mm, we're gonna put the wire on there. Snug her down. See, everything goes back together nicely, which is nice. Okay, there. Doesn't take much to put it back together. Doesn't take much to put it back together. And then before I start bolting it into the cart, I'll hook up the battery. And we'll make sure that it turns before, uh, and make sure not, it doesn't arc anywhere. That's the last thing we want to do is put it all back, whoop, right in my face, put it all back together and then find out we have a, a short circuit internally. Okay. So now, Temporarily here, hook up our battery. I'll snug it down later. I just want to make sure. Okay, ready? There we go. Actually, sounds pretty good. So I'll unhook the battery again.
So it comes down to this kind of stuff, like this kind of a repair. You know, if if that's all the problem is, it's not going to cost you anything at all. A little bit of time. I'm not sure as heck is better than. Uh, Not having a cart. I don't know about you, but I would rather spend a little bit of time to pull this apart and see what it is. If you're competent or confident enough that you can do this without, you know, being able to put it back together as well. That's important. Gotta be able to put it back together. All right, put the starter generator belt on. It actually looks like it's in really good shape. I'm gonna start the uh, adjuster bolt first. If I, can, I gotta get in there with uh, something to pry that up because now I gotta move the light. Don't drop the bolt. Can't. I gotta get the bolt through the. There we go. Okay. The adjuster bolt just wouldn't go through. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is I have to get the the washer on now. Key is off, battery is disconnected. The hardest part about this is now I gotta kinda lean over the camera a little bit. Okay. The washer isn't the hardest part, the, the nut is. So I might have to move you if I can't get in here. I'm going to get my pickle fork here. I use a pickle fork as my adjusting tool because it's the perfect fit. Holds it up nice. I can get in here a lot easier. Right, so what I got to do is I have to move you guys just a little bit. Ooh, this camera's getting hot. Drop the uh, lock washer because the bolt is sliding in and out freely here. Okay, there's that. I had to um, just move the uh, thing. There we go. Okay, the nut is started. And it's now touching. What I'm gonna do is switch over to 916th. I wanna I wanna get these um I need the extension first. I wanna get these pivot bolts snug, but not the hunga tight. Just okay, like so. Good. Come on. I'll tighten them up later. I don't want them to the point where I can't rotate the uh, or pivot the starter generator. Okay, that's on there. So now I'm gonna just tighten this belt right up, nice and tight. Adjuster's tightened. Take that out. That's good. I whoops. I'm gonna leave that in there because I'm gonna need it again. But I want to get to. I want to retighten this up. Okay. Oh, there we go. That's tight. I know this one's 
pretty much tight already because it has a tendency of doing that to me. Okay. All right, that is, that is tight. One of the neighbors came down and chatting with him for a little bit, so, okay. All right, belt's tight, these are tight, adjuster bolt is tight. Let's see if this bad boy starts, ready? Oh, actually, here, let's give you the grand view back here. If I can get this stupid mount to work. Ready? Oh, yeah. Um, we're not done yet. I didn't forget, I promise, I didn't forget. First try, hook this up. I'm going to use the ratchet here. I'm going to use it as a ratchet. Okay. That's tight. Ready? Okay. Let's try that again. I mean, first try. So just for poop and laughter now, let's, uh, no, first things first, let's take this, since we know we're good here, put the cover back on. See, this is a 90, uh, 94, so it's very easy with these to get to this control box because there's no, there's nothing in the way. Now, if this charging system works like it's supposed to, this will be a successful repair. Finally, a cart I don't have to order parts for. All right, let's see what we got here. Can you guys see what I'm doing? I hope. Output cable check, 13 and a half volts. Wow. So I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking this works. I know this is a, I'm going to call this a 500 CCA battery. Surface charge, test in vehicle. Turn on headlights. That's because we ran it for a second. So what we'll do is we'll follow the destructions here. Turn off headlights, press enter. Good and pass. Look at that, 602 cranking amps. That is, that's phenomenal. No, we don't need to print. Let's check our, I, I'm going to assume the charging system is working if it's got a surface charge. Let's see what we got here. Turn off load, start engine. Pick up the cranking load. I'm going to flick the headlights on when I do that. Cranking, oh, okay. Pick that up. cars do charge a little bit high which you know it's it's fairly normal but what I want to make sure is that it's not charging above that we'll make sure we're I don't know if you guys will be able to see that or not let's see if we can there. can you see that meter probably not hmm. okay Okay, well, I guess we uh, have another problem. Looks like we have a overcharging thing. Well, we know the starter generator is charging, but it looks like we have a, a faulty voltage regulator, it seems. Just want to make sure we're all plugged in. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Um, I think we're... No, we're on the right side. Okay. I think we're going to have to change our voltage regulator. 
Let's unplug the starter generator here for a minute from it. And we'll just check. Make sure somebody wasn't in here farting around and screwed the wires up because I haven't seen that. Not another, but we're gonna have to put a voltage regulator in it. Alrighty then, that's uh. Well, I'm glad that we caught that. I checked it, so that's that's good. That's really good. Um, just to make my life a little easier, what we're gonna do is to get the battery out because I have to get to a ground wire that is buried behind the frame rail here. I'm gonna take off. Air box, maybe. Okay, there's that. And these pop out fairly easily. These have a retainer bungee cord thingy. They slide out of the choke assembly and then right out. We probably should check that while we have it. Hey, look, there's a disconnect in here. You know, I completely forgot that was even in there. Interesting. Anyway, so down in here, the there's a ground connection. So we need to get to... Well, I might as well shut the breaker off that I didn't realize was there. What the hell? That's 9 16th, really? I guess so. You still going there? Here you're going. So you saw how we determined that that was the case. So voltage regulators, they could just fail. Oh, hang on. Hold on. I think we figured out something wrong. So this wire goes up to the hour meter. I think somebody was in here picking with this because this isn't correct. Let's pop this off. It might just be, I don't know if the voltage regulator is faulty or not. It very well could be but it could also be what's causing the battery to constantly go dead because I know that was a complaint. Yeah, look at that, the voltage regulator goes to the wrong side of the starter generator, or the solenoid rather. Okay, well, see, one thing I never understood, I always like to put the battery, the heavy terminals first and then the little terminals. I don't understand the logic behind that, but okay. So, shove them down in there. We can put this side back on. The battery is technically disconnected because I have the breaker off. All right, so that's that. This is the one that goes with the starter generator. This comes from the battery. Let's lift this out. We have one that goes down to, oh, looks like there's a couple of wires. One goes to the switch and the other one goes down in there. So, all right. So the camera shut off. Good thing I caught it. I don't know if it shut off because it overheated or because the battery died or a combination of both, but the, it is warm. So, okay. So what we got, what we're, I didn't get any further than just unhooking that. So I got to get this out. There's a really weird setup going on here. I got to figure out Seven sixteenths deep socket, I think. Let's see what's going on. This. Okay. Let's 
really not sure what this is. Okay, there is our old voltage regulator. We'll put our ground wire in here. I know on some of these carts, the ground for this uh, voltage regulator goes right to the frame rail. That's why this wire is so long. But because this is how it was when I got to it. Uh-oh, where'd that go? Not exactly certain what's going on here. So we'll just restore it to the way it was. With the exception of hooking up the uh, <laughs> voltage regulator to the right side of the solenoid. So then we take the other, other ground wire, and this will go, I'm just gonna pop that right there for a minute. This will go to the small terminal on the switch. I need my needle nose because I can't get my fingers in there. And I don't wanna take the orange wire off. Okay. So that basically closes the bottom switch closes to ground and shorts out the ignition coil when you let off the accelerator. And then we'll put this down in here like sideways like it was, which is fine. It's not going to hurt anything like that. It's not really the right way to put it in here, but like I said, that's where it's got to go. And then we'll put that on there, this on here. And this one for the hour meter, same side. Okay. And then lock washer, nut. And then we'll check our voltages. Now, one thing to keep in mind with these carts, they don't run very good at all without the... Um, the air filter on so make sure you hook the air filter back up when you go to run it because it'll kind of spit and sputter and cough and burp and fart that's weird but that's just how it is all right so hour meter voltage regum later got some grounds here we'll just shove those down inside and then I'm gonna leave the voltage regulator disconnected for a minute because I want to check all right Turn that back on. Let's check this air filter. I'll pop this open really quick. Perfect. As always, see these things are always clean. These, these things rarely, rarely ever go dirty because of the way the, the, way the routing is on them. All right, I'll put that back there. Strap this air box back on like so. I'll tighten this on so we don't have any air leaks. Right. Okay. And now I'll take my voltmeter again. Power, ground. All right, I'm gonna try to do this single-handed here. So 12.46 is our voltage. Stopped at 14.9. So we'll plug it in. Tuck the wires down inside. That's unfortunate that that 
voltage regulator went, but at least we caught it before we sent it back to the customer because that would have really sucked. So let's do that again. call that good like I said earlier club cars do charge a little bit higher than the others do but at least now we know that we're hooked up correctly and I betcha I betcha any amount of money well not really any amount of money but I'm I'm pretty confident to say that because the voltage regulator was on the constant power side I bet you that's why it failed and I bet you that's part of the reason why the battery kept going dead on this cart all the time that was the one reason why we installed that breaker. I kind of remember doing that now. So that's it. That's job done. So there you have it, guys. That is a perfect example cart right there where you can have one problem and multiple issues will pop up because of one thing failing and it's causing other things to fail. So there you have it. That's that for this one. That's it for this one, I should say. So appreciate you all very much. Thank you so much for watching. As always, uh, be sure to like the video if you liked it. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you already haven't. Check the video's description for links to products that I use every single day to bring you these videos. And until next time, we'll catch you in the next video.